Hello friends, this is Dr. R.B. Kusua, Associate Professor in the Division of Veterinary Clinical Complex at FBSC and H. Scots Jammu, R.S. Pura. Welcome to my YouTube channel and if you are new to my channel, so kindly subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for the further notification. Today we are going to discuss about the nutritional bone disease in a 3 months old German Shepherd dog. So there are two main nutritional bone disease. One is the rickets and second is the nutritional secondary hyperparathroidism. The nutritional bone disease or we can also say the metabolic bone diseases are from the clinically is very difficult to diagnose unless and until clinician take the radiograph. So the history of uh, this uh, three months old uh, puppy uh, that uh, this puppy started showing the lameness in the right hind limb. So so we examined, so we found that uh, there is a uh, dislocation at the tarsal joint. But we also noticed that the enlargement of the distal metaphysis of the both radius and ulna of the both forelimbs. This is the typical clinical sign in case of the metabolic bone or nutritional bone diseases in the growing dog. But on the basis of this only, it is very difficult to say whether this is the rickets or it is the nutritional secondary hyperparathroidism. So, if such type of swelling is seen in the dog, so a clinician must go for the radiography to diagnose the whether the this disease is the rickets or nutritional secondary hyperparathroidism. There are certain other disease condition which show the similar clinical sign like hypertrophic osteodystrophy, premature closure of the physis and the retention of cartilage core or RCC. So, RCC is the developmental disorder which is primarily seen in the giant breed of the dogs whereas the premature closure of the physis is seen when there is a trauma to the physis normally it is a bilateral in nature so overall to diagnose uh, any type of uh, nutritional bone disease or developmental bone disease or other type of uh, bone disease in the growing dogs it is very very essential that clinician must go for the radiographic examination so we took the radiograph of uh, this puppy so this is the medulateral view of the radius ulna this is the craniocaudal view of the radius ulna and this is the craniocaudal view of the tibia so if you look at the this particular view so you could see here this is the distal extremity of the humerus this one is the proximal extremity of the this radius and this is the ulna. So this is the distal extremity of the radius and ulna. These are the carpal bones and below this are distal to this metacarpal bones. So on the basis of the open epiphyseal plate or physis or growth plate, we could say this is the radiograph of the ang animal. We should never confuse with the fracture. This is the uh, epiphysis or this is the auricular process given this the medial epicondyle is also this open this is not fused even this the proximal epiphyseal plate of the radius it is also open here you can see uh, the distal epiphyseal plate or distal physis of the radius and distal physis of the ulna both are the open so these are the certain radiographic sign by which you could say that animal is angle now uh, come to the actual radiographic sign of the uh, metabolic bone disease and this particular uh, radiograph uh, we detected on the basis of this particular radiographic sign it is a case of the nutritional secondary hyperparathroidism this is the typical radiographic sign of the nsh so in nss what happened so there is a broadening of the distal metaphysis of the radius as well as the ulna so this sign broadening is also seen in case of the rickets in case of the rcc but here this distal metaphysis it is the saucer shape and there is a increased radio density or in other words you can say this is the preferential area of the mineralization and in case of the nss uh, which is triggered by the hyperactivity of the this parathyroid gland because of the low level of calcium in the blood so body try to maintain the blood calcium level so parathyroid gland deplete the calcium or it mobilize the calcium from the bone into the blood so that is why you could see here there is overall decreased density of the bones 
so because of the decrease in density of the cortices and the distal metaphysis so automatically increased radio density so this is the important radiographic sign of the nss and the physis is open here so physis is normal in case of the nss where in case of rickets this physis there is increased thickness of the physis and the distal uh, epiphysis is normal here it is the called histolite process in case of this ulna so th this is the uh, some radiographic sign of the nutritional secondary hyperparathyroidism in radius and ulna at the distal extremity so if you see the this is the craniocaudal view of the uh, same bone so you could see here there is a broadening of the distal metaphysis of the this is the radius and this is the ulna so here you could see although this view is not uh, showing the clear radio density but if you see here so there is a broadening of the distal metaphysis and uh, its shape is like a saucer so this is saucer shaped uh, distal metaphysis with the increased density and uh, you could see here the epiphysis is normal here epiphysis is normal here epiphyseal plate is also normal epiphyseal plate or growth plate or physis so these are the normal and other bone is also normal but overall the radio density is decreased if you see even the this sign is also visible in the proximal metaphysis of the this tibia if you see so this is again you can say there is increased radio density at the this proximal metaphysis of the tibia and if you see uh, and if you look at the this overall density so definitely we will find the decreased density of the cortex so in nut cell in case of the nutritional secondary hyperparathyroidism so there is a osteopenia and this is the reason why in case of the nss or other metabolic bone diseases because of the generalized osteopenia so dog is liable for the fracture even uh, if there is a mild trauma so as far as the treatment of the, this condition is concerned so uh, the treatment is nothing it's just uh, simply give the vitamin d3 injection and uh, add the this uh, calcium and phosphorus but if you take the blood sample of this particular animal so you will not find the hypocalcemia why because this condition is trigger when there is a hypocalcemia and at the time of disease condition body already depleted the calcium from the bone and it has maintained the blood level of calcium so that is why in case of the disease condition if you go for the estimation of the calcium level so you will not find the low level of calcium so this is all about the clinical sign of the uh, nutritional secondary hyperparathyroidism or overall the nutritional bone disease condition and the radiographic sign of the nutritional secondary hyperparathyroidism in a 3 months old german shepherd dog so thank you very much for watching this video and if you like this video so kindly subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for the further notification